Over the years, I've bought more accessories for my bikes and my cars than I'd care to admit to, especially to Mrs. RM. Most of them, if I'm perfectly honest, were completely unnecessary and therefore absolutely vital. The bike doesn't need any of these accessories, it's an inanimate object after all, but I get a lot of pleasure in sourcing them from obscure websites, tracking the shipment halfway around the world, waiting in for the delivery guy, and then opening up the box and smelling the newness of my latest superfluous acquisition. So here's a rundown of the nicest stuff I've bought for my bikes over the years, starting literally at the bottom with this rug from IKEA. It's designed for the living room, so absolutely no fluid retaining abilities here. It's not the sort of mat you want if you're going to strip down and restore an oily old classic. No, this is more for you to sit or kneel on as you install other unnecessary accessories. It's wider than most dedicated motorcycle garage floor mats, meaning there's more space, and being red, I think it bestows immediate regal grandeur upon both your bike and your garage. As fascinatingly collectible as they are, I find key rings pose a unique quandary. The more exotic or ornate they are, the more likely they are to damage your bike. Unlike in cars, where they usually just hang down from the steering column, on bikes they flap around violently in the wind, so any metal parts like the ones on the left here are to be avoided at all costs. This one is actually sold by Triumph, and I bought one, but as soon as I opened the box and held it in my hand, I knew I'd never use it, not with that big metal triangle that would flap around in the wind wreaking havoc. Pity because I've bought a couple of handmade leather keyrings from this guy in the UK for my cars in the past and they do look, feel and smell delicious, as well as costing in excess of £150 in some instances so they definitely tick the right boxes. But for my bikes I invariably end up with these simple soft leather or cloth fobs and when keyless ignition type transponders are involved I usually just get one of these silicon covers to protect the key from other things like house keys in my riding jacket pocket. For the old fashioned physical keys that I had on my Triumph Dryden and I got on my Speed Twin, I found this on AliExpress for about £12, a simple soft leather fob that's wind safe and a real leather cover for the bow for that retro touch. How about a sign for your garage wall? All sorts of designs to choose from of course, some of which can even light up. I went with this slightly more industrial looking plain steel Triumph logo and if I recall it was available in three sizes. This is the smallest at around 30 centimeters wide. The bike doesn't know it's there of course, but I do and as it's the only piece of wall art in my garage at the moment, it brightens the area up just a little and it was only about 25 pounds I think. Most of us have a need to carry stuff on our bikes at some point, be it just a multi-tool and puncture repair kit for a day trip, right up to camping gear and spare clothing for a week-long tour around Europe. Personally, I think there's a reason hotels are so popular and I'm not really into camping, but I am planning a trip to Morocco next spring when my Honda Transalp arrives, so I'm already thinking of how I'm going to carry all my stuff. Now I've been using these bags from one of my favourite aftermarket suppliers for the past few years and have always found them very good. They look right on just about any bike, even my Speed Twin, and are built to typically high German standards of quality. If Bentley or Range Rover made motorcycle luggage, then this would be it. The tank bag uses a quick release ring that bolts onto the fuel cap and can be bought for most makes of bikes and for longer trips the matching tail bag and panniers fit easily to the rear and are held in place with straps and discrete removable brackets to keep everything away from hot exhausts and spinny wheels and chains. I originally bought these for my 2019 Honda CB500X and then also used them on my BMW F900XR and Speed Twin and will almost certainly be carrying them over to the Transalp as soon as SW Motec produce the appropriate mounting brackets. It's not cheap, but you definitely get what you pay for. Let's get back to the deliciously pointless now in the form of this blingtastic gold chain. I put this on to replace the rather nondescript dark grey factory chain as part of my customization project. I just thought it would go well with the gold of the Olin's rear shocks and the dark blue paint, and I think it does. Serves absolutely no purpose, doesn't make the bike go any faster, but it makes me happy. It needs wiping down regularly, of course, to keep it looking gold, but this is my garage queen, remember. I won't be putting one on the Transalp. Now how about a sleeping bag for those cold winter months when your bike rarely makes it out of the garage? 
I must confess I'm in two minds about these, to be honest. While they do undeniably offer protection against the inevitable scratches as you brush against your bike or car in the garage, they are a faff to put on, and will more likely than not trap dust and any moisture, which is never a good thing. I started off with custom-made covers from this UK company on both my cars and bikes. The covers are made from a thick sweatshirt-like cotton and can be customised with the colours of your choice. Very nice quality, but I ultimately found them quite heavy and awkward to take on and off. And they're also quite expensive and being custom-made, you can only use them on the car or bike you ordered them for. So recently I switched to these universal or semi-universal Protex covers from Oxford, which stretch over most bikes and are much easier to put on. To be perfectly honest though, as I'm lucky enough to have a warm, dry and relatively dust-free garage at the moment, I don't bother with them that much and only tend to use them when I know the bike's not going to be used for at least a month. And while we're on the subject of hibernation, don't forget to keep your bike nice and cosy with a battery tender like these I use from SeaTech. I've got one for the Speed Twin and one for the ADV350 scooter and also one for my van as it sees very irregular use. I like SeaTech because they've got a good reputation, but primarily because their chargers have got lots of nice green LEDs on them, and as all men know, you can never have too many lights and dials. I use them in conjunction with the company's comfort connectors, hardwired to each battery so I can disconnect them quickly when I do want to take the vehicles out. Ever fancied having your seat reupholstered? Hmm, reasons are varied. You might want more foam or gel for improved comfort, to repair a tear or other damage or just fancy a different material like genuine leather or Alcantara. Now, I went down this route on my 2004 Triumph Daytona, and while I was happy with the overall look and the improved comfort, the finish was not as good as factory, and the wrinkles you can see here that you very often get with artisanal suppliers always kind of annoyed me, and as I generally like to preserve the factory look, I've never actually dared do it again. Something that does keep the factory look because it's totally invisible is a good ceramic coating to your paintwork. I had one put on professionally after Triumph did my custom paint job and it certainly does feel ultra smooth. I was advised to maintain the coating once or twice a year with this ceramic spray from Autoglim, which while probably not as durable as the original professional coating is very easy to apply and wipe off and the paint continues to glint in the sunshine as you can see here. This one's cheap, but so nice that I've mentioned it before in other videos. It's one of my favourites, a jeweller's dapping block to take some of the pressure off your kickstand. Yes, I know you could just use a piece of wood, and indeed I do for the scooter, but I felt the red carpet would be sullied by a vulgar slab of chipboard, so I sourced this hard rubber block designed for jewellery repairs, but offering just the right combination of hardness and cushioning for the hard done by kickstand. And being rubber, I can even condition it from time to time with my Autoglim rubber and vinyl spray to keep it nice and soft. And to finish off before you think I've gone completely insane, I suppose one of the greatest gifts that you can give any bike, certainly one of the most expensive, is better suspension components. Now I've had Olin stuff on other bikes and while it is eye-wateringly expensive, there's no denying that these Swedes put some serious knowledge and experience into their springs and dampers. I don't know how they manage it, but the result is the seemingly impossible sporty handling and comfortable ride at the same time. My Speed Twin has been transformed, at least at the rear. The forks are a project for another day. The most expensive item on this list at around £1,200, but as the French say, quand on aime, on ne compte pas. Let me know in the comments below which outrageously unnecessary and or embarrassingly expensive accessories you've managed to sneak past the wife or husband. And, as always, thanks for watching.